I'm up here at Hook, Line, and Paddle in Wilmington with Chris, the owner of the shop. We're at the right social distance, and we're going to talk about how to buy a used sit-inside kayak. So I'm up here at Hook, Line, and Paddle in Wilmington, and again, we're at the right social distance. And what we want to talk through, at least what I want to have the expert talk through, is what to look for in terms of how to buy a sit-inside kayak. There's a few on the lot here that are used ones that met his standards that he's going to sell, but you need to pay attention to this if you're buying from a private party or off Craigslist because you don't want to get ripped off. So Chris, what's the biggest mistake people buy buying a sit-inside kayak? I think the biggest mistake is people think, oh, it's their first kayak, I'm going to buy a beginner kayak, and they end up buying a $200 kayak. Um, there's no such thing as a beginner kayak and an entry level or next level kayak. They're either bad construction or good construction. What we like to think about is, you know, recreational sit inside, 12 foot's kind of the magic number. Um, it tracks well in the water, it naturally wants to go straight, it has a great glide to it, so when you finish one stroke, it's still moving and not slowing down before you take your next stroke. Um, the longer they get, the faster they go, but then there's a little bit more manipulation to get them to turn and get everything that much more kayak around. But 12 foot is a 12 to 12 and a half foot is a really nice little sweet spot. Um, something like this Perception Prodigy, this could be your forever boat. So we talked about when we talked about doing uh, looking for a used fishing kayak, we're gonna attack it. In the, we're gonna attack it in the same direction. We're gonna go through the top deck and then we're gonna turn it over and check out the hull. So on this boat, this is Perception's Comfort Carry Grip Handle. This is a thick nylon webbing strap, rubberized handle, it screws in. So you wanna to look to make sure there's no wear points where it's been lifted, you know, carried around or torqued and turned. All these, all these webbing straps on this handle look great. You know, this is something easily replaced. I think a lot of people don't realize it. You know, it's, I think it's $20 retail for two of these handles, one for the front, one for the back. You take the two screws out, put a new handle on, put the screws back in, very simple. The top deck's in good condition. Of course, it rained this morning before we shot this video, so there's kind of gunk all over the boat. But you know, we're looking—we're not looking at cleanliness. We're looking at it, it, it construction. The deck bundies are where they should be. Nice tight retention. Come back here, where the thigh pads are, for comfortable for your legs. They're in great shape. They're installed. So with the sit inside, these foot pegs are inside the kayak. So you want to make sure the the rail is in good shape. Make sure that it locks in different positions to get your leg length right. So this, this peg's working great. Next thing we're going to do is look at the seat. So we've gone over the foot pegs. Now I want to kind of check out the seat. So this is this is the zone seat that comes in the Prodigy. Uh, it's not breathable, but it's very comfortable. It's very padded. The bottom pan, the fabric's in good material. The, the material on the backrest is in great shape also. Um, this does have the ability to raise up. That's a little tight, but doable. We can kind of fix that. It's probably just going to rinse that with some water. You have a place back here to adjust your backrest. That's functioning. And you also have a place here to lift up under your thighs for a more natural seated position. And those are functioning. So again, real simple things to look for. So we always check this, the quality of our, of our recreational kayak seats for comfort. If Finn sits quietly and looks pretty happy, we know it's a good seat. Now with a sit inside with, stir, with stern dry storage, the other thing we want to check on is the bulkhead, which is this closed cell mini foam right here. And what they do is they, they use a uh, silicone to, to adhere it and seal it. And we can see the bead going all the way around you can feel it up top here that there's no real holes or chunks missing or anything like that. So this is a good looking bulkhead. So I'd be, I'd be happy with that. Other trick you can do is you can rest it up on a sawhorse, take the garden hose, put a gallon of water back here. If it runs into your dry storage, you have a leak somewhere down here. You, you can go back over with some more Lexel. It's a quick, quick process to fix. Right, so moving to the stern of the kayak, we have deck bungee back here for more storage. Again, bungee's got nice retention, still got some, some, some longevity to it. 
where they're attached to the kayak, they're looking in great condition. We have a hatch cover. Again, a lot of people have made comments like, geez, that hatch is really hard to get off. It's kind of tight. You want a good tight hatch cover. Um, so there's good retention. It peels right up. Your little lanyards here in case you lose it. It, it doesn't go anywhere. Putting it back on. There's a little bit of effort to get it lined back up around the lip. And it makes a good seal. So that, that, that hatch is in good condition. These are made out of rubber, so they can lose a little bit of their life over time, especially if you store them out in the sun. This hatch is in great shape. Um, last but not least, here we are. We check the bow handle. We check the stern handle, same way. This is nylon with a rubber grip on it. There's no obvious wear, wear points on the handle. The screws are looking good, so we're good to go. The other thing we need to think about, we've gone through the whole top deck. Now we gotta check the hull underneath to see if there's any kind of major damage or gouges. And that's kind of what the most important thing we need to check. Okay. So we've gone through the top deck of the kayak, check the seating, check the foot pegs. But the biggest thing we really need to look at and take some time on is the hull. So I'm gonna go ahead and roll this guy right over. We can get her actually right over so we get a good look at everything. So the first thing we wanna look at is the bow. Um, this is where you're gonna find most of your obvious scrapes and scratches. This is coming off the ramp, coming back up to the ramp, landing on a beach. There'll be some scratches on it. Look, I see nothing that's too deep, nothing to really raise awareness. Coming back through here, you know, the sides are always in usually great shape. You see a little something like that, you know, that's not a big deal. That was probably going on the roof rack or in the bed of their truck, just scratched on something, not a huge deal. Again, right down the center line of the kayak, you can see where they bump bottom a few times, but again, nothing to be concerned about. All the way back through the stern, back through here is looking good. So what a lot of companies are doing now is they're adding a, a skid plate here to the stern. So this is what you're going to drag up on the ramp or drag off the ramp. So this piece of plastic is going to wear and not the actual hull. The two screws are easily replaceable. They're very inexpensive. This kayak is three years old and you can see the amount of wear on it. That's probably another three years worth of wear before we have to be worried about buying which I believe is somewhere in the 12 to $13 range to replace this. So again, very inexpensive. Even if you find one in great shape, and this is kind of shot, 12 or $13 out of pocket, you get a brand spanking new one. It's not a deal breaker. It wouldn't be a deal breaker for me if I had a hull in great condition, but this was just worn down. The person who used it was using it the way it should be. They're bringing it up on the ramp on that skin plate and not just dragging it straight up with the hull. Um, a little simpler going through a sit inside than a sit on top. There's a little less going on. But again, if you're looking at getting into the sport and you think used is the way to go, I would recommend a used kayak from a strong manufacturer than a brand new cheap kayak. There's just night and day difference in construction um, materials and performance on the water. The sport is one that you can say you do get what you pay for. Thank you, Chris, for taking us through the key points of how to buy a sit-inside kayak. As you can see, we maintain social distance throughout the episode. If you've got some comments, throw them down below. And if you've got questions, you can reach out to Chris. I've got his contact information in the description. Thanks.